Did I eat that already? Man, I'm still hungry. This is lemon quartz from Brazil. It's a pretty large piece. It's a nice yellow lemon color. And this is what we're gonna use for our Excalibur project. Okay, let's take a look at our big uh, lemon quartz in Refractol. Which is has about the same refractive index as quartz. So, works really great with uh, all the quartzes. And you can see a couple minor issues on the, appear to be on the surface. Very near the surface. But in general, this stone is, is clean, internally clean, which is a couple of, couple of very minor inclusions. They all look to be near the surface, so. To clean off the refractol, just take the stone to the sink and use a degreasing uh, dishwasher detergent. I use Dawn and that'll take the refractol off of the stone. And then I will uh, kind of grind a flat spot on the stone in order to uh, mount it to a dock. A few weeks ago, I made a tutorial on cutting the Excalibur design in a dark pyrope garnet. But the creator of the Excalibur design said the design also looks great in yellow quartz in addition to dark garnet. So in this video, I will cut Excalibur in a very large piece of very nice yellow quartz. Here are the cutting instructions for Excalibur. Excalibur is one of Fan's earlier gem designs. So you should contact him on Facebook. He's pretty active. Um, if you want to see some of his other awesome designs and his more current designs. Now, I know many of you are looking at this gem rough and asking, why not call it yellow citrine? Why are you calling it yellow quartz? Well, many jewelers do use the term yellow citrine and yellow quartz interchangeably. It's not a big deal. However, to be 100% accurate, this is yellow quartz from Brazil. The difference is in the saturation and color tone. But now watch me call it yellow citrine throughout the rest of this video. Okay, between my trim saw and my 100 grit uh, topper lap, I preformed our citrine. So I still need to bring the pavilion down a little bit and close up this uh, culet. But there's also two more facets, two more rows of facets that also close that up. And I need to make it a little bit smaller. You can see this shiny part that that hasn't been touched by our uh, lap yet so that's got to come in just a bit to take care of that part and that part the rest of it's just about right so it's just about the right width a tiny bit smaller and then we bring the top down now um, we have plenty of room for the height of the stone because if you go to your instructions it gives you a H to W ratio, a height to width ratio of 0 0.597. And what you do with that is, that's the height to the width. So you, you, you measure your width, and whatever your width is, you multiply that by your factor, the 0 .9, 597, 0 0.597. And that gives me, in this case, about a 13.7 uh, millimeter height that I need. So, I put the 13.7 in my gauge and and I see if I have that much uh, to make it to the top and there's plenty extra. So I've got plenty of extra so I don't need to worry that I won't have enough rough to for the pavilion and the crown. And and when I make it a little bit smaller I'll have a little bit more room. So. It's all looking good and I'll continue to uh, preform and cut our stone. Okay, I finished going over the pavilion with our uh, 320 grit diamond topper lap. And so now I'm going to go over it with the 600 grit lap. So I do need to bring the pavilion down just a little bit, but cutting with the 600 grit and then the uh, my 12M 
will close up that culate. So, but it'll go, it'll bring the pavilion down just a little bit further and that uh, won't be a problem. I have this much space right there. I can go down to that far before I start uh, having to bring the sides in and make the stone smaller and close up this, uh, this point. So I still have plenty of room and plus as I go over the sides with the finer and finer uh, grit laps it's going to move in slightly so I'll, I'll be okay. But because of the uh, that I need to fill in this uh, culet make a little point here on the bottom of the pavilion and because the space is here this is about just about as big as I could have possibly made this stone given this uh, uh, problem here. Um, it, it couldn't have been much bigger because that, uh, that point would have gone up. So we're right where we ought to be. Okay, so here's a trick that works sometimes. It works great with large stones like this, but instead of polishing the entire girdle, at 90 degrees, I put it my mast at 95 degrees and got a rougher lap and cut out this part. This is at 95 and this is at 90. So now, as I go back and uh, continue to pre-polish and polish my girdle at 90 degrees, I'll only be working on this part. I don't have to worry about more than half of that uh, large facet. Makes it easier to to cut and polish. So it only works if you have uh, a dock that's a, a long ways away from the edge of your stone because you don't want the dock to hit the uh, lap. But in this case the, dock, the stone is big enough and the dock and everything worked out just fine so as I continue to pre-polish the girdle I don't have to polish this. It's all going to get cut away everything from here on down is going to get cut away when I cut the upper half of the stone anyway. So I don't want to spend time pre-polishing this and then polishing it. I just wanted to show you here the uh, difference between a 12M, which is about a 1500 grit diamond uh, lap, and my 600 grit diamond. So you can see that it's with the 12M you're getting a very nice pre-polish and then I've uh, also gone over the girdle. And this is the part where I set my, my mast at 95 degrees and kind of trim this out of the way so I'm only working on this part of the girdle. An alternative would be instead of 95 or, or 90, 91, 2, 3, or 4, or 5, and make this so that uh, it doesn't, when you polish this, it doesn't touch this, is you could go 89, 88, 87, a lot of people do that and then you're only working on a very small amount of the girdle. The reason I didn't do that in this case is because this cut is not a is not one where the girdle it lines up all the way across. It, every part of the girdle kind of goes up a little bit and down. So it's an uneven girdle. So if I were to do 90, 89, 88, 87, it would kind of look a little different. Uh, it might just, you'd have to go down to this far anyway. So that's why I chose not to go 89, 88, 87, but go the other way, 91, 92, 93, in this case 95, and trim this off. I finished polishing the pavilion of our citrine uh, with uh, the Creamway Lap from Gear Loose, and I used uh, a spray bottle of cerium oxide and water. Uh, polished right up beautifully, no issues at all. So now I will transfer the stone and cut the upper half of our Excalibur design. Okay, I've gone over the basic facets on our citrine for the Excalibur design using a 600 grit lap. And uh, the first two facets I went over it with my 12M. Uh, the 12M is in microns because the lap was made in uh, the Ukraine. So. 12M is about a 1500 grit lap. I know most people, and I used to use a 1200 grit lap, uh, but when I got this this lap, it's in micron, so it's a 12M, 1500 grit. It's about the same as a 1200 grit. And you can see the difference between my 
12 or 1500 grit versus a 600 grit lap. So I'll continue to uh, go over these facets with my 12M and then I'll use uh, 3000 grit diamond on a bat lap and see where I need to go from there. Okay, uh, let me zoom in on that. So under magnification, I've started frosting the tip of the sword and this facet I did with uh, my 12M, about a 1500 grit and this facet I did with 600 grit. And I want to go with the 600 grit and it's because this uh, citrine is such a, a bright and lively stone that I'm afraid the 1200 grit, 12, well 1500 grit in my case, frosting is not going to be dark enough. So I'm gonna use my 600 grit lap um, and you can see the difference between the two uh, frostings. So I'm going to use 600 grit uh, frosting. All right, here is Excalibur. So I will uh, soak it in the acetone to remove the uh, two-part epoxy from the dop, and then we'll weigh it, measure it, and uh, send it off to Bopi. In this video, I cut a second gemstone using Fan's Excalibur design. When I reached out to Finn, he told me that this design works very well in dark garnets and yellow quartz. So, I previously cut the design in dark garnet, and now I cut it in yellow quartz. I like them both. When I frosted the garnet, I used a 1500 grit diamond to frost the facets. Uh, in this video, I used a 600 grit diamond to frost the facets because it makes it a little darker of a frosting. Uh, the garnet was already dark, so I figured the lighter frosting would work best on the garnet. And since this yellow quartz is a very bright and lively gemstone, I felt that the darker frosting would best bring out the sword. That's why I used a 600 grit. About half the fasteners I've talked to use 1200 grit, and about the other half use about the 600 grit to frost. Um, I have a 12, a 12M lap, which is microns instead of grit so it's about a 1500 grit but about the same as a 1200 grit. I like this design in both garnet and yellow quartz. Easy, easy to cut design. I think you ought to give it a try. Let me know in the comments which gemstone you like best. Also let me know what you think of the Excalibur design and always happy fasting everyone.